what's going on so I'm only doing a little bit of an updated shake tutorial um, today we're using dissolve shake instead of easy inertia dissolve is what I've been using lately and um, this tutorial may be relatively fast try to keep it a little bit short because um, it's not really much to talk about except a lot of just me repeating a bunch of trial and error shit so go ahead and slap down an adjustment layer go ahead and add dissolve shake um, turn off motion blur, um, dissolve percent, I usually just stick around 25%, it's just something I, I don't know, like, use, I don't know why, but it just works for me, uh, frequency, I don't really go above, like, 8, cause that's, like, just way too strong, and it's, like, way too jittery, I guess, um, keep this around, like, 4, see how this looks, and again, like, the lower the frequency, the slower the shake is, I guess, I know a little, like, more smoother it is. Um, X shake, I like to turn this down a little bit, maybe like 70, 70 like 120 is fine. I stay around that area. Um, y shake goes way up, like one, like anything above 150, I guess. Z shake, I don't really touch. Tilt shake, like five. Um, amplitude, I don't go ev like ever above three unless it's a build up shake. Um, I can show you guys how to do that. Um, I really only do build, build up shakes. Sorry, I only do build up shakes when um, I'm scaling out. I can zoom out. So amplitude can either actually like stay 1.5 to 1 for the initial, like the start, and then at the end, I'm zero, obviously. See a little bounce here, but I want a little bit more of an X shake or a little bit more of a swing. So I just crank this shit up. It, like it depends on how the scene looks and like how it's like. Obviously, set up the dissolve shake first, you know, keep the amplitude, change the frequency, key motion blur off, all that good shit. Um, go into like, I guess, like a couple frames before the end of your scene, and instead of zero, you're gonna keep it at like point, point one five to point two. Um, because you don't like leave it at zero, there's still gonna be that little bit of amplitude that keeps it shaking a little bit. It's very subtle, but it's also very nice to keep. So maybe like point. Um, now for the build up, I do this all on the same layer, by the way, so it could look a little messy. You could always keyframe frequency and then bring that one frame back, keyframe motion blur, one frame back, keyframe motion blur again, and keyframe frequency again. And then you change frequency to like eight because you're gonna like this is gonna the amplitude is also gonna change. So, so last frame. I'm gonna go here, crank the amplitude up to three, maybe even one frame back, because you want to be able to see it. Now I keyframe or not keyframe. I um, turn these into whatever these are called, bro. I don't know. I F9 these. I totally forgot the the term. I literally don't talk about like this shit ever. Um, wow, what? I don't, I just want to see amplitude, bro. Okay. So this is the graph that you're going to be using. It's like an easing graph. You can like just play around with it. I don't know. Just make sure it just gradually builds up. So after you've done all that, you're left with this. Boom. Build up, scale out, dissolve, shake. Oh my goodness. Now, this is hideous, okay? Like, I, I, that looks so ugly. Oh my goodness. How are you gonna fix that? Oh my gosh. Scale shake. This where shake comes in. Except, I don't like this. I, I, I really don't like that. So, we're gonna do easy inertia. So, I have a, I'm gonna link a tutorial for that. Uh, it's pretty old on how to install and how to use it. But basically, amplitude and frequency, these are stock values. Um, crank up decay to like 13. Uh, keyframe scale, make two keyframes of just 100. Key, uh, change the second one, 120. Boom, bouncy.